Hey everyone, I'm Brad Dalkey here. Today we're gonna be learning the nipper. I know a lot of people in the good, good comments have been asking for me to show y'all how to hit this shot. So I'm excited for this video. So the nipper is really an important shot to have in the bag. It can help you get out of some very tough situations around the green. If you are short-sighted to where there looks like there's almost no chance to get the ball close. If you can put spin on the golf ball and get the ball to stop quickly once it lands on the green, then you can get shots close that a lot of people think were impossible to get close. It's a very tough shot to master. I've always luckily had pretty good hands around the greens, but it's also taken a lot of practice to be able to kind of perfect the shot for me. And also, like I said, it's very important, but it's also just a very fun shot to hit. When you hit a nipper well and it lands on the green, it starts ripping back or starts just spinning. You can hear it once it hits the ground. It's just a fun shot to watch and a fun shot to hit. This first part of the video will be for the beginner level golfer. Just a little bit simpler terms and um, simpler ways to be able to get spin on the ball. After the beginner level, we'll go into intermediate and expert. So if you're a more experienced golfer, go ahead and skip on to those chapters. So the first step for beginner golfer, and I just wanna go ahead and state this right now, if you're a beginner golfer, you're probably not just gonna be going out and hitting nippers after an hour of practice. It takes a lot of time. So what we're gonna be talking about today is just being able to put spin on the ball in the first place with the chip. And the number one thing to be able to do that is contact. Contact is by far, even with the nippers I hit, contact is the most important thing. But to be able to put any type of spin on the golf ball, you have to be making good contact with the ball and through the turf. And if you have good contact, it will automatically put some spin on the ball. So I'm gonna talk about a few things here um, on how to make better contact consistently with your, with your nippers and with your chip shots. First things first, you want that club face to be slightly open. I see a lot of high handicappers and um, newer golfers that will set up the chips with just a square club face. You want this thing to slightly be open. Not a ton. Whenever you get to more expert levels, that's never, you know, you start opening the face up more. But if you're a beginner golfer, just get that thing slightly open. You want speed through the ball to be able to create spin. If you're barely moving the club to the ball, it's not gonna have a whole lot of spin. Having that face open allows you to get speed through the ball, but the ball won't shoot off like it's a full shot. It'll allow that club to slide under the ball, take a little bit less speed off of it, a little less force off of it, but it'll still have that spin because that club was moving fast under that ball. Having that face slightly open also allows the ball to catch more of the grooves. If I'm hitting with a square face and this is the ball, that ball's gonna roll up a little bit, but it's mainly just gonna shoot off. If you have an open face and you go under the ball, it'll allow that club to travel under the ball more, and this ball's gonna catch more of the grooves on the face, which is just gonna create more spin. So the open face helps take a little bit of the force off the ball, but it also allows it to catch more of the grooves on the face, and that just equals more spin. So the first step was open face. The next step is having a narrower stance. This goes along the lines with just all chipping pretty much, but a narrow stance is extremely important for your contact. If I have a wide stance, like it was a normal golf shot, but I'm only hitting it 10 yards, this just allows more room for my weight to be moving. I mean, say if I move my weight too far this way, I have to move all the way back this way to get con good contact or else I'm just gonna flop behind it. Or if I start moving too much this way, I get too diggy, I get too, Far in front of the ball, wider feet is not good for chipping. You want to be narrow so all this weight stays in this smaller area instead of your weight being able to move this wider area. So I usually keep my stance, maybe my feet are probably about a ball width apart, ball and a half width apart, and this will just help everything stay centered. You want to keep that weight a little bit on the left side and just keep everything in this narrow little area and not let anything get outside. The next one is a shorter backswing. I've seen lots of people getting into golf and um, higher handicappers. When they're around the greens, obviously I've seen some get too short, but most of the time I feel like I see people taking it back way too far, and then all of a sudden they're deselling through because their brain knows that if they hit the ball, hit the shot full from there, if they hit it at a normal pace, then that ball is gonna be going way across the green. They'll take it back too far, decel, leads to bad contact chunks, they might thin it. So the most important thing about the length of your backswing, you wanna be able to find a length going back with different shots where you can be aggressive through the ball and that ball's not gonna be going way too long. Keep that backswing short so you can stay aggressive through the ball and have some speed through the ball. And then lastly, you want to keep that weight on the left side the entire time. If I'm 50-50 right now, 50 on the left, 50 on the right, 50%, I want it probably, I'd say I'm about 
80% left side, 20% right side. And I'm a righty, so obviously if you're a lefty, it'd be more weight on your right foot. You want this wedge to be coming down on the ball. Not too much, but a little bit down on the ball. And having that weight on the left side allows you to get that angle of attack going down. If I'm 50-50 right here in the middle, it's gonna be coming in much lower. That leads to just bad contact, it leads to the ball maybe coming out high with no spin. You wanna be able to have some downward force on that ball. And having the weight on the left side the entire time can help with that. And that's the beginner level for on uh, how to hit a nipper. If you're a beginner, you're probably not, probably not gonna be going out and hitting nippers right away. It takes time, it takes practice. But if you follow these steps, you should be able to start seeing some spin being put on the ball. Um, you should start seeing that ball check up a little bit maybe. If you start seeing that spin be put on the ball and you wanna to go to the next step, come back to this video, watch the intermediate level. Once you master that one, go to the expert level. Welcome to the intermediate level lesson on how to hit a nipper. The audience is more of the maybe five to 20 handicappers. Um, people who play a lot of golf, people who are pretty good at golf, but not quite at that expert level maybe. So that's for you to decide. I'm gonna be trying to show you my best on how to hit a nipper. I don't expect you to just go out there and start hitting these crazy nippers right away with these tips. It takes time, it takes practice. I say just get this one down and then maybe go to the expert level once you feel like you're ready. I'm gonna give you my best tips on how to start generating more spin around the green so you can see, start seeing that thing check up more, start seeing that thing stop faster once it gets on the green. Let's see if we can help you out. The first step in being able to hit a nipper is you want to get this face pretty open. If you've seen the videos, I've opened the face a ton and I don't recommend doing that quite yet. I need to get comfortable with just opening the face up first. But if this is square, you probably want to get this face open to about right here. You want a lot of speed to be able to create the spin for the nipper. If you have a square face and you're getting that speed, that ball is just gonna sail. It's gonna go a long ways. You want that face open to kind of kill some of the blow and be able to just get it come out softer, but with still still having spin because you have that speed through the ball. The more open the face is, the more grooves that ball is gonna catch as the club is going through it. Square face, if this is the ball, it's gonna hit, it might catch some grooves, but it's just mainly gonna shoot off open face that thing's gonna slide under and start catching more of the grooves and more grooves equals more spin and then you also you want to get at least what I do I get a slightly weaker grip a weaker grip is whenever if this is normal you get that left hand further that way and the right hand as well if this is normal for the right hand get that right hand further that way this is more of a, on a full swing it's more of a cut bias grip it's just a slight change open the face a little weaker grip and having that helps that club face just stay open a little bit longer through the ball, in which, like I said, it allows it to catch more of those grooves, kill some of the blows, so it just helps that face stay open and not shut down on you. Next thing is you want the ball to be played further back in your stance. If this is normal right here, you want that ball just played a little further back as if maybe off the right big toe. So you'll have the open face, a little weaker grip, and that ball played off that right toe. The next thing has to do with the weight in your swing. So with any chip shots, you probably already know that you want that weight on your left side and the nipper is no different. You want that weight to stay on your left side hard the entire time because with the nipper, you wanna be able to come in steep and to be steep, you have to have that weight on your left side and just keep it there. So like I said, we got the setup. Face more open, a little weaker grip, ball played further back, weight on the left side throughout the swing. And on the back swing, you want the space of the club right here you want it to feel like it's pointing at the sky. If you keep this space shut like this, it's not gonna, you might be able to generate spin, but it's not gonna be consistent. You want that face to open up, get that thing pointed this way, or actually I guess the face would be kind of more, be more pointed at you, but it's pointing towards the sky as well. And it might not be that much in, actual, in all reality, but that's what you want to feel. And that will allow that face to be open and stay open. I mean, it's kind of the main gist right now. You want that club face to be open and be able to stay open through the shot. Next step is something I've actually, I've tried to teach this to other golfers I know that you know are probably more the intermediate level. They seem like they're scared to hit the ground. Like, I don't know, I think chipping, you just kind of think you're not supposed to make a divot. I'm a big divot taker on chips. That's just how I always have been. Not everyone is, but that's how I am. So you can't be scared to take a divot when you're hitting a nipper. If you're hitting it correctly, because you want to be coming in steep, you want to be generating some speed under the ball, you're gonna be taking a divot. So you can't be scared to you know, hit the ground. You don't wanna just try to pick it clean and nip it. So just don't be scared. Just take a nice little divot when you're hitting this. Bada bing, bada boom. 
Next step is you wanna be able to keep your speed up through the shot. This is even something I have trouble with or I have issues with sometimes. I see a lot of people deselling through the ball when they're trying to hit this type of shot. Probably because it does you, it does take a lot of speed through the ball to be able to generate the spin. And even for me sometimes, I'm, I think my brain just thinks like, oh man, if I hit this like I'm about to hit, the, hit this shot, then it's gonna sail over the green, go way too long. I'll decel last second, that just does not equal good shots. So you, want, you have to commit to it and you have to be able to Keep that speed through the shot. Can't be scared of it and just go this way or kind of soften it up. Stay committed and have that speed through impact. You have to know that contact is still the most important thing in hitting a nipper. You could do all the steps right, but if you don't make good contact, it's not gonna equal any spin. I hope these steps will help you out. Again, this is the intermediate level and don't be expecting to just come out here and start hitting shots that are spinning back five feet from 15 yards away from the green. Probably not gonna happen, but I do hope that this will help you generate more spin on your shots. You can start seeing that ball check up a little quicker, start, uh, start stopping a little quicker. And once you feel like you have this stuff down, maybe you start improving with your, your nippers and, and your spin shots. I recommend you to go to the expert level of this video and try out those tips and see if you can even generate some more spin on the ball. All right, this is the expert level lesson on hitting nippers. I expect people watching this video to be lower single digits handicap, maybe a plus handicap, Pro golfers, college golfers, really good junior golfers, people who know their way around a chipping green and have the time and dedication to be able to practice this because if you are not very good at it, you're probably not gonna go out immediately and start hitting these cool spin shots. It's gonna take time to practice. It took me a lot of time to be able to get pretty good at this shot. So let's get right into it. First things first, if you have seen me hit nippers, I open the face a ton, almost where it's flat on the ground. I want this face open as much as possible and the reason I do that is because if you do it right, you can still hit it low with that open face. Having the open face gives me the freedom to be able to shut down the face slightly at impact with speed, and I will know that ball is not gonna go a mile long of the green. So I can generate as much speed as I want, kind of flick the hands at it, and that ball's not gonna sail along with a square face. So I try to open the face as much as I can to give myself that room and that comfortability and freedom to be able to have some speed through it and put that spin on it. The next thing I do is I weaken my grip. And what I do that for is just to be able to keep that club face even more open. Because the one thing I don't want to do is shut that face down and that ball just sails along on me and just goes a mile. So it's just slightly weaker grip, open face, and that helps me to slide that club underneath the ball with speed and without the fear of going long. The next thing is I play the ball pretty far back when I'm hitting these, and that's because I want to get steep with it, with the angle of attack. I don't, like, when, when you see me in slow-mo, I'm coming in very steep this way. And so I play the ball further back. I'd say if normal a normal chip shot was, you know, here, I'm probably a little bit more right here. So it's not a ton, maybe half a ball further back, but it is further back than I would for a normal chip shot. Next, I want my weight to be hard on my left side throughout the entire shot, especially on the downswing, because I've had times before where I'll have my weight on the left side, be good, and then almost to try to soften it up a little bit, I'll kind of back out with the head with the weight, and that just leads to terrible shots. So you have to keep that weight on your left side, ball played back, and really commit to just staying there and getting nice and steep with it. The next step is on the way back, I want this thing to have the freedom I want the toe to have the freedom to open up. I don't want to open the face and then keep it right here on the way back. I want to be able to have it have the freedom of getting that thing even more open on the way back. Obviously, this is probably a little exaggeration. It's not going to actually happen like that. But I kind of, that's kind of what I feel though, is just letting that toe kind of release and open up on the way back. That just leads to that club face being able to stay open longer. Again, the open club face just generates more spin, gives me that freedom to have that speed to the ball. This next step is extremely important. Like I was saying, I want to be steep on the ball. I want to be coming in with this club face or this club going more down on the ball, but I don't want to be coming in steep just like, you know, this. I don't want to be coming in just super steep, straight up and down. So what I do to offset that is you need to be steep coming this way down, but you don't want to be steep from the down the line view. So what I do is I feel that steepness but I try to feel like this club is almost going, working inside on the way back and coming from the inside on the way through. The feeling of the inside on the way through and on the way back will offset the steepness of the swing. It'll still be from out to in, in a way, but having that feeling of coming from the inside 
will keep it from digging at the bottom because you want to be able to make a divot. You want to be able to get steep with it, but you don't want it to dig. If I'm hitting nippers or practicing it and I start seeing a lot of steep divots, just kind of getting stuck in the ground, I know I'm probably just coming up too much this way. Obviously it's exaggerated, but I'm just coming up too much this way trying to get steep. So I just feel like the club is almost passing underneath my hands right here. It's nice and inside and even on the way through, on the way down from the inside. You also want to feel in this section right here probably, you wanna feel like the club is leaning. You don't wanna be flipping it right here and try to generate spin right here. Because at some point in this, you do want to not necessarily flip it, but you wanna be able to release the hands for that spin and that speed. But that's not right here. Here you want to feel that lean, feel those hands in the end of the shaft getting ahead of the ball. But then the biggest thing, and this is where I generate all the speed through the impact. It gets to a point where about, for me, when I feel my hands are at the ball, that's when I start releasing the club face. And it's not just a flip, it's not doing that. It's just a nice release where you can kind of feel that club face is actually coming back this way, kind of closing a little bit as you're coming through the ball. It'll still be open because your face is so open. You got to open going back. Once you get about right here, you want to be able to release that club and slide that thing as fast as you can under that ball. Because it's not like my club face is like this at impact. It's going to be more right here. It goes from here to here very quick which that is what's generating all that speed. I'm able to manipulate the club, release the club so quickly in that little bit of time that it's generating a lot of speed and catching that ball just right to where it's riding up the grooves and generating a lot of speed under that ball. The most important thing besides contact is this area right here. It is extremely important to be able to learn and it's just gonna take practice. It takes going out on the chipping green, trying to figure out how it works for you, try to figure out that feel, being able to, with an open face, getting right here, leaning the shaft, but then being able to release it to where that shaft is pretty much straight up and down at impact, and that club face starts releasing and rotating at the right time to be able to generate that spin. So, I just wanna reiterate that, that is the most important thing besides contact that you'll need to work on, and it just takes getting out there and practicing and figuring out how to do it. The last step is the nipper should be finished how the finish of the swing should be. Obviously, different types of shots, it might release a little differently. The most basic one, I'll do it and these arms will kind of fold right here in front of my body and the club shaft and the grip will be very close to my body. So you don't want to be out here, you don't want to be, you know, doing this, but just posting up on that left side, but then letting the arms and everybody, everything just relax and just kind of fold right here in front of you. So let's put it in action real quick. A great way to work on the nipper, something I do a lot if I'm maybe not hitting that shot too great for a little bit or something I'll go work on on the shipping green, is I'll find a short-sided shot. Right here, I've got about eight yards of fairway. I might even put a tee down, probably two to three yards on the green, or if there's a hole that's in a good spot like that, I'll go to that. And what I try to do is land it on the green, but stop it short of that hole or that tee. And I'm not trying to do it by hitting a flop shot, I'm trying to do it with spin. For the expert levels, or even intermediate, I'd say try that, of just trying to build land that ball on the green but stop short of the pin. Obviously, if you're on firmer greens, you could give yourself a little more leeway. You just kinda have to feel it out on that, but it's just a good way to be able to try to see that short landing area and where that ball needs to stop. And uh, it's just a good way to kinda check up to see how good your, your nipper is at that time. And uh, that's something I do a lot. And I also just wanna reiterate, this takes a lot of practice. The nipper is not something that you'll pick up in no time. I don't want you to just go and practice for 20 minutes after watching this video and maybe it's not working for you and you just throw it away. Like it takes time to practice. Um, you gotta figure out what you like about it. Maybe there's some things you don't really like about it, some things you'd rather do your own way. You just have to figure out kind of your own way of doing things, but I gave you the skeleton on how I do it. Hopefully it can help you out. Yeah, I appreciate you watching. I know a lot of you have been asking for this video and uh, that's how I hit a nipper. We'll be having a lot of great content coming out from Good Good Labs here in the near future. So uh, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you're notified whenever a new video comes out. Much appreciated. Peace.